All right, Dougie Hawkins joins us now. Mr. Hawkins, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tom. How are you? Very good. Thank you for joining us on the program. You're welcome. Now, uh, Clive Palmer, uh, how did he approach you to join Palmer United Party? Well, Tom, it was um, through a very close friend of mine, Barry Michael, who obviously is a part of the uh, ticket as well. Yep. Uh, Barry made contact me uh, early last week. Um, I had a bit of a think about it. Um, on Friday, I happened to be... Uh, in the Gold Coast, uh, I had a function out of Jupiter's on the Gold Coast, and um, uh, Clive had, had got one of his uh, staff to come pick me up, took me up to his office or his building in Brisbane. We sat down for a good hour and a half. He told me his thoughts, his policy, um, how I could fit into where he wants to go, and I thought about it very, very quickly. He's a very positive sort of bloke. He's... Um, He's a very motivated sort of person as well. Uh, Tom, as we probably know, you know, Clive Palmer could probably go and buy an island and live on an island and don't care about Australia, but he, he does care about Australia. He wants to give something back, and I just said, I'm in. I'm in straight away. Tommy, he seems to have a, a preference for, for getting uh, sports people into his political party. I mean, thus far he's got you, uh, footballer, Barry Michael, boxer, Glenn Lazarus, I believe, up in New South Wales, yeah. former rugby yeah. league player. Are any, any non-sporting people going to get a look in? Uh, Tom, I'm not sure about that. I think at the, uh, the end of the day, uh, when you talk about Dougie Hawkins, obviously you talk about AFL footy. Uh, I'm the first one to put my hand up and say I don't know uh, a hell of a lot about politics. The one thing I do know about Tom is people. Mm. And this is what it's all about. I'm a people's person. Uh, I was born and bred in the western suburbs of Melbourne in Braybrook, uh, particularly in the 60s and 70s when times were very, very tough. Uh, as it is now, you know, you know how hard it is at the moment for the, the average family. Uh, electricity bills have gone up. They've gone through the roof, haven't they? I mean, they have. The carbon tax has gone right through the roof. And I, I know people, uh, Tom, who live in the western suburbs, families I know very well who can't afford to put their heater on at night and have got to sit and watch TV with three or four jumpers on or go to bed or go to bed early to keep warm. It's just... Oh, oh, oh. I, I reckon Labor and the Liberal people, Tom, I reckon they've lost touch with the with, with what's going on. Well, I, I wouldn't disagree with that, but look, specifically your party, I mean, you said that Clive Palmer explained all of his policies. You obviously felt that you yeah. had enough in common. What, what are the main things that, that you stand for that you want to change in Australia? Well, I think, Tom, it was a carbon tax, and that was electricity with the bills going right through the roof. Uh, employment down in the Latrobe Valley area, Gippsland area, has, has really grown a hell of a lot. And I think the one that which I, I know a little bit about is with the, the refugees coming across from Indonesia who are getting on boats, you know, where it might only seat 100, you might get three or 400 jump on these boats. Um, they're paying, paying um, uh, smugglers, you know, $20,000 $20, to get a seat on these boats. There's got to be a better way. I mean, there's nothing more tragic to see these young, young boys and girls and mums and dads you know, drowning, trying to get across to the, the lucky country. And it's got to be a better way, and I'm sure there is. And, and I, I would think, Tom, probably a way of doing it would be maybe for them to get a visa. You know, buy a plane ticket. might only cost you seven hundred dollars eight hundred dollars Come to Australia, if it's Melbourne or Sydney, where you might land. Uh, have the criteria of about this visa, and if you do, you fit into it. Yeah, you do. You don't have to go into detention centres. And if you don't, you go back on the plane you come came in here on. So... There's ways of probably doing it. It sounds easy for me to say those sort of things. I'm not completely sure how that works, but there's got to be a better way, Tom, than to have these these poor people trying to flee their country and and disaster waiting for them. And all the money, all the money that we're spending as well, the taxpayers' money, in millions and millions of dollars to try and save these people and put them in detention centres. It's not working, is it? Mr Hawkins, we've got plenty of people here who'd like to ask you a question. Would you like to take questions directly from the audience? I have no problem with that, Tom. Not a problem at all. All right, if you'd like to ask Dougie Hawkins a question, 96963, outside Melbourne, 13, 13 32. Peter, you're first. Go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, Dougie, look, um, you, you are a good footballer. You're a people's person, all right? I know where you're coming from, but and, and you mean well, but you are a politician now. If you want to become in this arena, we're going to ask you the hard questions. Okay, yep. what are your policies? You, and you admittedly said it yourself, you don't know much about it. Well, we don't need a person who doesn't know much about it. We want people who are going to do things the right way, not the wrong way. No. When we, when we, when we um, vote you in and you say, well, hang on, I've made a mistake, well, no, it's not going to be like this, it's going to be like that. So, Peter, can know, I, Peter, can I ask you, from what you've heard, do you think you might vote for Doug Hawkins in the Senate? 
I would vote for Doug Hawkins because there's no one else to vote for, but that's not why you should be running. All right. Thank you, Peter. I think, I think, Tom, with Peter there, I just, I just spoke about, you know, the refugees coming over. That is one of the policies. And obviously the carbon tax as well, with the electricity going through the roof, there's two of them. So I do know a little bit about the other uh, policies as well, Pete. All right. And we'll take another call. Richard, good evening. Yes, good afternoon, well, good guys. Afternoon. And, and um, Doug, um, congratulations, mate. I put take my hat off to you, mate, for jumping into the political arena because I know that you can make a difference. And uh, we've got to stop these illegal people from coming here. And uh, we've got to do something about uh, when they swear allegiance to the country and if they decide that they want to breach that, that they lose their their um, ticket to Australia and they are deported because you can't come here. I mean, you know, we've got so many of them sneaking across and uh, it's illegal. It is illegal. But what we haven't got, we haven't got spare boats to take out into sea with our military boats and say, right, you've come here illegally, you're saying your boat's sinking, we'll jump on this boat, it's a good one, it's full of fuel, head back to Indonesia because we don't want you here. Yeah. Well, thank you, Richard. That, that, of course, is Tony Abbott's policy, tow the boats back. Uh, Mr Hawkins, would you, would you advocate that as well? Well, I'm not sure about that. Um, I didn't quite hear the, the whole lot of that, but the, the, what I did speak about was the fact that, that, you know, with these people, some of these people, we don't know who they are. We don't know who they are. We don't know what their background is. What is their background? We don't know that. If you have a visa and you get on an aeroplane, you pay your seven hundred, eight hundred dollars. Better than these these smugglers are going to take twenty thousand off you. And if you don't fit in our criteria, once you get to our shores, you go back on the same plane you come on. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Finally, Mr. Hawkins, can I just ask you what do you want to be called now? People used to call you Dougie. I'll call you Mr. Hawkins because I always say that to politicians. <laughs> you can be Doug, Dougie, Mr. Hawkins. What do you want to be called now? Oh, I like Doug or Dougie, as long as you don't call me late for tea. <laughs> I tell you, all right. Doug Hawkins, candidate for the Victorian Senate with Palmy United Party. Good luck and thank you for your time. Good on you, Tom. Thank you. Well, we're going to hear a lot more from Clive Palmer. Amongst other things, he's claimed today that the Labor Party wants to bring forward the date of the election. This will be if there's yet another coup to try and uh, you know, put Julia Gillard down and get Kevin Rudd back in the main job. I don't think the Labor Party wants this to happen, but if it does happen, Clive Palmer says it's all a plot to destabilise him. I don't know how many people will vote for Clive Palmer, but he says he will have a candidate in every lower house seat and for all the Senate seats across Australia. We'll see what happens.